Hi, so what this is, is a big cardboard box, because it's more exciting than that. It's what's inside of it. It's actually a tricycle in a big cardboard box, and it was sent to me. It was sent to me to motorise, because um, we've doing, been doing quite a lot of electric vehicles, and it was pointed out to me that not a lot of people would want to, or are able to, or even have the facilities to make bicycles, tricycles, and vehicles out of bamboo or rolled up newspaper. And it would be kind of handy if they could see, or if we did a project where we took a production vehicle, we changed that to electric. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, we were thinking about that for a while, but of course that meant buying it. And then I got sent this, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you very much. And we're going to get it out, put it together, and then turn it into an electric tricycle. So let's get it out of the box. <laughs> So I deal with this the same way I deal with a Lego set. Get out of the box, lay out the pieces, make sure it's already there. Now this is a generic Chinese product, I can tell. It's badged and sold all over the world, but actually it's really quite nice. Now clearly the intention is to take this frame, which um, I would call a girl's bike frame, but I was told off for it. It's a step-through frame apparently. It's clearly a standard frame, and what they do is they bolt this section, which is a rear subframe, onto where the back wheels would go. I like that, it's very interesting, because if you want to make a tricycle, obviously, then you would be looking at doing something like that. Normally what I do is build an entire back. Obviously I'm doing it wrong, because I could have just taken a bicycle and put a subframe on it. But that's what they do, they've taken a bicycle, which is that bit there, and then they've built this, which is the rear subframe, and this is the bit that carries the brake and the gearing, and we've got a six gear gear cluster here, I think six gears is plenty. And that's the bit that we're going to drive, there's the axles there taking the wheels. Now with this, remember, these ones don't have a differential, what they do is drive one back wheel and let the other wheel free spin, but it works really well. Now the whole thing, according to my checking, costs about £220. That strikes me as incredibly cheap when you think about these things. It does actually look really nice. I can see there's a bit of a bend here where it's come in the box. It seems to have bent there, so I'm going to have to bend that out. But everything else is here and ready to assemble. And we get a little manual and, <laughs> not, not, not the greatest, some tools. And I'm assuming that these tools are just about all that you need to put this bike together. We do have some other tools ourselves, obviously. So the next stage on this, really, is to put it together. So to put this together, what we're going to start with is the rear subframe. Now remember, one side is driven, and you can identify it because it's got a slotted bit on it. And if you look at the rear wheels, you'll see there's a corresponding slot on the rear wheels. There's actually just bearings on that one. On the other rear wheel, there are just bearings on both sides. So there's a bearing there and a bearing there. So that one actually is free to spin and you pop that one on the bit that doesn't have any slot on it. So that one goes there. There's a spacer there and then we just tighten that down to lock it on. And it's got a nylon lock nut. Now on this one, slot to the inside because that's the bit that's gonna get driven. So this entire bike is uh, 220 pounds. I looked at an American website for just the rear axle section, didn't include anything else, it was just that section there. They wanted 150 pounds for it. So maybe this isn't as well made, but <laughs> you can almost buy the entire thing for what some people are selling this axle for. 
Now it's got a strap brake which is right there. It's just this leather strap that goes around this disc. You pull that, pulls the strap tight and that's the brake. So maybe better brakes would be good. But that fixes that to there and now we can put the rear derailleur on. But the derailleur, once you fit the little nut, goes in there on the right hand side. When you've done that, you can fit the main frame to the rear subaxle. Now, it's best to do it upside down, apparently, and one slots into the other. There are six bolts, and it says take the bolts out. I've actually just taken the nuts out, so I can slot them together and then fasten the nuts together when I've lined them up. Okay, there were a couple of little bits that had bends in them from transit, which I thought was a shame, really. I mean, I don't mind I had to bend them back, but it has a kind of classic feel. I mean the fenders for instance are metal all the way through, in fact there's hardly any plastic on this thing at all, which I think is cool, and when you fit things with things together it fits together like an old bike used to, and I love that sort of stuff. And it has a really nice sort of classic look and feel about it, but getting knocked about I suppose is just the hazard of travel, but it is a shame when you have to bend a few bits together, but then obviously I've been working on bikes and no bikes, so it's not really been a challenge for me to be able to do that. And then we just bolt the fender onto the wheel there. So putting on a chain's a piece of cake, it's like threading a needle actually, it goes round the cog that way, comes up through the derailleur and then round the derailleur that way. So the derailleur acts as a kind of spring on it and back round to here and then we put on the chain guard. So <laughs> there really is quite a lot I like about this actually. I like its chunky feel, I like the retro style. There was a little bit of disappointment in the bends, but they took no time at all to whack out with the rubber mallet or to bend back in shape. And then it's a simple job putting it together following this, because it's kind of part assembly instead of full assembly. It comes part assembled, so you're really just fitting bits and pieces. And then when you've got those bits and pieces fitted, all we really need to do then is connect up the gear and brake cables. We've still got the back uh, carriage thing to put on and the rear mud guards and then we have ourselves a trike. Okay that's it together I mean it truly is amazing what you can buy in a box from China isn't it? So I've just got to connect up the brake cables and gear cables and then give it a run and of course what we're going to do next with it is electrify it but there is my tricycle all put together and it didn't take that long actually a couple of hours. <laughs> okay I love it, but <coughs> I suspect you have to be a little bit into retro to love something like this. Of course, the question now we've got it is what are we going to do with it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to subscribe.